Hey oh people, Philip Blank here and today on Start It Up we've got the 2023 Indian FTR Carbon R. An American muscle bike, this V-twin 1200cc bike is Indian's modern take on their circle track heritage and they brought a road focused refined version of that bike here into the FTR. Though not quite perfect, the FTR is bringing a lot of key features here to a very well rounded package and something I'm excited to share with you guys here today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, if you're not familiar with the brand, Indian was actually one of the first American motorcycle manufacturers, founded in 1901, which is two years before Harley Davidson. They were very pivotal in building some of the first race bikes out there. In the 1920s, they were actually the global manufacturing of the most bikes put out, and they supplied the US Army with both bikes in World War I and II. Now, there was a lot of business ups and downs, and in the end, they went bankrupt in the 50s, and then from that time, they've kind of gone up and down with resurrections of brands trying to buy them, reignite, and it kind of fizzled out. And with all those ups and downs, the most recent up is their purchase from Polaris Industries in 2011, and they moved the production to Spirit Lake, Iowa, where they build everything for the US market today. And since then, they brought back all the cruisers, and then in 2019, they introduced the FTR line. Now, when you really start to look into it, you'll see that the FTR is actually a really unique motorcycle and does not have a lot of direct competition. Now personally, I like to call it the American muscle bike as it's not quite the precise scalpel of like the KTM Duke, but it's far more powerful and track focused than say the BMW R9T or the Ducati Scrambler. Now also with this bike, Indian is a big bagger and cruiser focused company and there is a lot of that brought into how this bike rides. So it's bringing quite a bit more heft than those other naked bikes and your center of gravity is much lower here to the core with all the weight being shifted down. And then this typical mass on your other bikes is also brought fuel tank down below the legs. So with this is more akin to say a Mustang where you've got a lot of power, but not quite the precision and agility, but still an excellent motorcycle. Now the power plant of this bike is the big old V-twin. It is 1,203 cc's here on those two pistons and it puts out 120 horsepower and 87 pound feet of torque. And with that, our ECU has those three maps of the rain mode, the standard mode, and then the sport mode, giving you that full aggressive curve minus some of that overriding controls there. The transmission is a traditional six speed with a down, up, 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 up. And then the clutch here is just a manual wet clutch. I will say that this seems to be one of the least refined parts of this bike. I do feel it's kind of sloppy. I've been trying to make some a few adjustments to kind of improve it of where I'm getting an engagement, but the rest of the bike just feels phenomenal. This one feels yeah, nothing worth praise. Now, another feature the bike has is when you pull up to a stoplight or just slow, and then your bike is idling for a little while, the rear piston actually disengages and you'll feel, you'll feel like idling consistently and then it kind of clicks and then it just idles a little bit faster. It shuts off the rear to try and reduce the amount of heat between your legs as this is a hot engine but it is fully liquid cooled so I thought that was a neat little feature just to help. Now the sound of this bike is pretty standard I would say it sounds good but nothing super exciting super bike sounding and there's not much snarl or pop on it so potentially we'll look at getting a new upgraded exhaust but what you got on here yeah, it's good enough for most people. Now as I was saying earlier the FTR as a naked bike Definitely is a heavyweight coming in at 518 pounds wet. And to me, being a smaller guy, definitely loving the 300 pound KTM Dual Sports, this definitely takes a little more oomph to get around, especially on low speeds, just maneuvering in and out of the garage. Now at full operating speeds, you definitely feel the weight go away. And at this point, I'm really comfortable with the size of it. Now the FTR has a 60 inch wheelbase, has 6.5 inches of ground clearance down below, and a seat height of 30.7 inches, minimal adjustability, with your rear coil here mainly setting your preload weight, not so much your height of the ride. Now for a walk around on the bike, the key differences that sets the FTR carbon apart from the stock FTR is of course, carbon fiber accent panels all over your fuel tank cover, your shroud there in the front and the fairing. Uh, you have the fully adjustable Olin's shocks, forks in the front, and then the rear adjustable shock there, and you have an upgraded seat there, and then of course up in the front, the four inch ride command display. Now the ride command display is on the mid-tier FTR, but I absolutely love the carbon fiber accent panels all around. It's just such a beautiful weave, very well done with that clear coat. And then your decals are actually inside of that clear coat as well. The striking difference between the gold forks there, I uh, absolutely love it. Now in the past, the R-Carbon did have the Aprakovich exhaust on there. They removed it for 2023, which is kind of a disappointment. I do wish they had kept that stock just to avoid having to purchase anything extra, but man, I love the color scheme on this bike. 
Now up in the front, you do have the dual rotor, four piston Brembo brakes there on the beautiful cast aluminum rim. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see down in there, but it's actually really ornate. Now I will say they're not easy to clean, but just get a long little brush you can scrub down in there. Now up in the front, we do have the full LED headlight with the highs and lows, and this little bar here glows blue. It's really cool because that's the same symbol in the rear on the tail lights. So cool little accent there. Now one really cool thing I like about this bike is not everything is as it would appear. So you have your dual V-twin head there. So you got the one coming up here in the rear, but then your left one goes up kind of into where your fuel tank would be. This is not a fuel tank. It's actually just a carbon fiber cover. The fuel tank starts here, runs backwards. As you can kind of see in there, the fuel tank runs right under that rear. And then up there, you have your air intake coming out here to the other side. So your air box, your filter and everything is inside that. Then your ABS, your ECU, everything is kind of tucked up, hidden under these carbon fiber covers. Your fuse cover is behind this little panel. Three bolts there, pop it off, there's a little cover. And then your battery is down here on the side next to this little cooler here, underneath your main radiator up there. And when I first got on, the preload was set a little stiff for me. So I had to drop that rear shock tension down and that's definitely improved the ride overall. Come around here to the back. You those cast wheels as well, the Brembo brakes. Now my least favorite part of this bike, of course, is this rear deflector arm. So you've got your blinkers and plates and everything down there. I intend to get a plate erase. Some companies got them where you can mount your plate up there and everything, blinkers out the sides. Now with this bike, you do have room for a passenger. You've got a grip there on both sides and then foot pegs that flip down. So not bad. Here's that cool tail light silhouette I was pointing out in the front, but dang, what a good looking bike. Now, despite the retro looks, this bike is fully loaded with really all of the technology you would expect for a 2023 motorcycle. So of course, you've got your lean sensitive ABS, changing that ABS dynamic based off of how you're cornering. You've got the traction control just to prevent any slippage. You've got a rain mode, which is dropping that torque curve, giving you a lot more stability in that rain and then stronger traction control. You've got your stability control, monitoring your front and rear wheel speeds to keep things stable. And then in addition to that, you've got the, whether you like it or not, wheelie and stoppy mitigation. So that wheelie mitigation's got the accelerometer measuring the pitch. When your front end's coming off, it's gonna drop the throttle response to try and keep it downward. And then same for the stoppy. If you slam on your front brake too hard, it's gonna monitor that rear wheel coming off the road, releasing that front brake to bring that back in, back down. Now there are three drive modes, the rain mode, as I was saying, the standard, which is kind of a middle torque curve with all these features on, but there is a sport mode, which I believe shuts off both the wheelie and the stopping mitigation as I've been able to get the front wheel a little bit off the ground, but not something I try to do much because I like to ride, I don't like to die. And then we've also got on the left hand here, a cruise control. Cruise control is not adaptive, not something they carry yet. But the cruise control actually, surprisingly, I use more than I ever thought I would. So really this thing has the full suite of the Bosch MCU capabilities kind of loaded into this system. Now with Indian being a cruiser focused bike, how exactly does this feel? Now I am six foot, so with both feet resting flat, you have, despite the pants there, when I'm fully positioned on the bike, sliding back, you can see this is my leg position here back straight, butt back. This is kind of a bit more of a natural stance, a little more cruiser style than your full on naked or especially super of riding up closer and lower. Now I would show you what it's like to have a passenger on the back, but my wife is pregnant, so she doesn't fit very well. There's only room for a very small person with your butt kind of coming off the rear here. But you do have two underseat grips, exhaust right there. Just make sure you keep your feet kind of away or riding like so. Now I absolutely love the Ride Command display. It's one of those things you don't know what you're missing out until you experience it. So first off, we've got the simple cluster here, just showing your basic speed, RPM, and then gears there. You also got a little compass and a thermometer in there. Now to see some more refined details, you just swipe there, you got your fuel gauge, odometer, a little bit more info there. Now on this, this is just your main digital gauge. You click this next button. Now you're into your data range. So right now we've got 26 miles till E on there. Left side here, MPG, right side there is your fuel tank. Popping over here to the right, you got a ride tracker, your trip data there, quick reset, and then you can also do a new trip. This data can all be saved to your Indian account, synced to your phone. Next screen over is gonna be our GPS. So you can quickly get around some nav all while operating the bike. Next one over is our audio. When you pair your phone and AirPods to the bike, you have full control of that audio here on your left hand gauge, which you can then hold in and then be able to click up or down for volume levels or forward and back for skipping, anything like that. One more mode over, back to the home. To get to the settings, you've got this little setting here. You can quickly pick any of those pages we were just on in addition to phone. But with that, you can quickly get to your phone and then you have a full 
Again, with a headset, you can talk on the phone while riding here. Back there, get into settings mode, you got that, and then your controls, and then that's gonna be able to control your brightness and then your different drive modes there. So now we've done a full walk through the bike, let's go ahead and suit up, start this baby up, and get out on the road. One annoying part of this ride, with all of your gauge cluster here being technical, when you start up, it takes a really an excessive amount of time before we can even get that going. So we'll start it up here. You can see that. You can see that there. You get the nice little startup screen. Let's turn the bike on. Still black. So I can start driving off with that still being off, but that's how long it takes to get through. Then okay. And now we're good to go. on this is a fairly repeatable 3.4 seconds this thing will just launch and then your top speed is 124 miles per hour electronically limited I've seen somebody mention that you can pull that off and then get up to say 147 on that top but uh, I ride for fun and not to speed up my day so about talking about the American muscle class who is this bike for this bike is not a beginner bike it's got a lot of power and a lot of extra weight where if you're just getting new to riding, I would not recommend this bike, hardly even the base FTR. Your price is quite a bit higher with the base one coming in, it's, I believe it's 13.5, and then this one coming in at 17,250. This bike, I would say it's for a person with more experience and more understanding of what the big power is gonna be on this machine. That's some deer, ooh, deer. Along with that, the extra weight relative to a standard naked bike, say 50 to 100 pounds more for the size, it's just going to be a lot more to shuffle around when you're when you're not on the bike. Now, once you get riding it, that weight really disappears. I wouldn't say I feel uh, excessively heavy. Braking does an exceptional job with the Brimbos that are on here, but not a full beginner bike kind of ride. Oh gosh. So who this bike would be for, if you're coming from say a larger, heavier bike, cruiser or something like that, wanting something more in the sport bike realm and the naked bike world, this is an exceptional as it's got the retro styling, it's kind of got that more comfortable upright stance, this is not the scapel of the KTM Duke, but it's incredibly satisfactory, just a joy ride out, and it's just a very beautiful and aesthetic bike. I've really enjoyed commuting on it, and just a daily great bike, plus you have the ability to have a passenger if the need arrives. I think it's got some pep across the board. Ah, yeah. The best reason to get this bike, the right command display. While riding, I love this mode switching button on the right finger. Just clap, tapping it, jumping through our screens here. And then as I was saying earlier, all you gotta do is hold this button up or down, quick you, get you quickly into your audio mode where you can skip forward audio and then left hand there. Aside from the cosmetics and carbon fiber package of the Carbon R, going from the base up to the next level, that display just brings so much more control to the ride instead of your odometer and speedometer. So I really love being able to control my audio just through the thumb, quick DPS, quick data. You've got all that info there. And that is the kind of strength of what this brings together. With that though, it's kind of quirky. The start at time is definitely excessive. You're going to sit there for like 11 seconds with a black screen. I would like to see that sped up 
and kind of just a faster and more responsive uh, display there. Now I would love to also see a garage door opener implemented into that display. I really think that'd be a premium feature that would just be excellent to have to make this bike a little bit more perfect. Pull up to your garage, touch the display, and then up goes your garage door. It's also nice that your display will show messages to you. So right here, it's, I just got a message incoming from this person, one image. It doesn't show you live, like it's not after CarPlay, but you're at least getting notified of when you're getting calls. And you can pass that through to your AirPod Pros or whatever headset you're wearing. Now, a huge con to me is there's no hold, talk to speak, say a Siri button. Say I wanted to ask Siri to do anything, take me to a certain location, stuff like that. Cannot be done wirelessly. Cruise control, pretty simple. You click that, you click it in to engage. You got the light pop up there, and you'll click that. Hands are free. Shut it off. There you go. Yeah, just my turn here. I shut it off. You can click inward to cancel or tap any of the brakes. It'll disengage it. So right here, for example, just listen to the tone. That rear cylinder is shut off, so it idles a little bit higher. And your display comes up here. Okay, I see that your display shows that the back is shut off. You give it a little rev. Now it idles a little bit slower. So there, it just clicked off again. Shutting off that back cylinder, just reducing the amount of heat between your legs as that really goes right up there into your seat. Now I still would like the seat to be more plush. Uh, just sitting on it, nothing wonderful there. It is comfortable to shape, but yeah, I would like a little bit more foam. Now for fuel tank, you do not have much range. I just built this guy up. You have full tank and 111 miles. So not a touring bike and not something really long distance there. Like this, kind of a day, sunset, beautiful roads. Ah, oh, well, speaking of beautiful roads, a big old pile. This is what this bike was made for. So that's all I've got for you here today on Start It Up with the 2023 Indian FTR Carbon R. A excellent bike that I'm uh, really excited to put some more miles on. Been riding just about every day this week after work. So let me know if you got any questions, comments, or corrections down below. I'll be happy to help out or figure out anything you may have questions on. So I want to thank you for your time. Have a good day. Peace. Ooh.